Heads up, guys. I've been spending a lot of time on Lighthouse, and I wanted to show you some of the best ways to get into the power plant. This video is going to be a little longer than usual, as I decided to cover all three of the routes I use in one video. But I've added timestamps in the comments so that you can reference back to it quickly if you find it helpful. So for the purposes of clarity, I'm running this in offline, uh, no PV enabled, just because it'd be easy to show you the routes. As quickly as possible, to explain some of the highlight points and the things you want to watch out for without being shot at by rogues. Because when you come to do it yourself, you'll have to do it a lot slower than I do in this guide. Now, I've been playing a lot of Lighthouse just so I can try and learn the map, the layouts, uh, the minefield locations, that kind of thing. And I absolutely love it. I think Battlestate's done a really good job of adding a map that's, that's more PvE-centrically focused. Kind of like a raid you might find in an MMORPG. But still with elements of PvP laced in there. And I'm not really a big PvE kind of guy, but they've done such a good job with this map. So the first route we're going to take is over the top of the rocks, which overlooks the whole of the power plant. Now, if you're still using the early game loot, sort of things like AKSs and uh, not heavily modified AKMs, weapons with reasonably high damage dropper. You can take out all of the rogues on buildings 2 and 3 reasonably safely, but you won't be very effective at trying to take the rogues out on building 1. And that's that's mostly because of damage drop-off on the bullets combined with the drift of accuracy for the longer range engages. And I've not managed yet to figure out what damage drop-off on the SKS is, but I've put quite a lot of rounds into the rogues on roof 1. I think it's a combination of gear and damage drop-off, which makes it really hard to take the rogues down on building one from on top of these rocks. But I do wonder if they have a larger health pool as well. There are only two minefields up on these rocks, and if you come in from where this pool is, there are a couple spawns over here, and one round there. You come around this rock side, you can quite easily skip around the mines. And when you come to here, and for context as to where we are, this is the, the sunken village over here. And all of these chalets are in, in that direction over there. You can either come up here if you're feeling a little brave. And this is non-passable terrain here, but there are a couple of really good sniping spots if you skirt along this rock face. You'll largely go unnoticed until you get to sort of here. This... Um, primarily applies to bears. Obviously, you six can get a lot closer to the compound. But as a bear, as soon as you're in line of sight, you're kind of in trouble. So from here, you can get a line over to building one um, without taking any fire from building two and three. But you'll need uh, something like a, an SVG or an SV98 if you want to, or larger if you want to try sniping from here. And you can quite clearly see all the gun emplacements in the whole of roof one. Now, I've engaged them with an SKS and an AK from here, and uh, results vary. You can't consistently take them out, or at least not within a decent amount of time. You can, from this spot, get an angle down on patrols that are down in the yard. And if you edge around here, you can kind of get an angle on building three. But as soon as you start to cry in this hill, you're going to start drawing fire from the compound. It's one of those, you can run up here, you can put down some fire, but you can't really hang around for too long because as soon as you start drawing aggro, uh, you're out in the open and you're going to start taking a lot of fire. You can come up over here and down here and skip all of the minefields. And you're perfectly clear to skirt down these rocks and not take any fire until you sort of get to here. But you shouldn't take any fire from building three, which is around the corner. You should only take fire from anything that's down in the yard or from on the wall. You don't have to worry about that gun emplacement as it's looking out across the bridge. There are sometimes a marksman down there that will take shots at you, but you've just kind of got to play that one as it happens. This is the first minefield here, and it's quite a substantial one, but you can run all the way around here and, and not worry about mines. The other way of approaching this is rather than going up on that ridge line, if you come down here and take this alley, it gives you perfect coverage from the compound and you can skirt around here, but this is where the minefield starts. So you can skirt around on these rocks, but you've got to be quick and you've got to move fast into here because depending on where patrols are, um, you can take shots from down in the yard or from building three. 
you can get a really nice angle from here on building one if you did want to try and snipe. It's about 250 to 300 meters, depending on where you're sat here. There you go, 258 meters to the edge of this wall. Again, 762 PS, the damage drop off does seem quite substantial. You also gotta be really careful when approaching this edge because you'll start taking fire from building three. And anybody that's down in the yard. The minefield is right there. So if you come through here, through this space and down through here, jump over to avoid the bushes, you can run across here to this point here, which is where we came down before. This deflate will give you cover from the whole of the compound, but you need to come up on this rock and skirt around on this rock. And this is a point where you can potentially take fire from the compound, but you need to stay on this rock because there's a minefield right here, right in this section. But you can run around here, and from here on out, all the way through to the back of the compound, there are no mines. I've paced back and forth on here to make sure, and I'd put money on it, that there are no mines here. And I've covered every strip of grass that I can find. And you've got perfect coverage from the compound, but obviously you need to watch out for other PMCs and scabs trying to do the same thing. But there are a lot of points that allow you to get to different positions to be able to snipe the different structures. But be very careful, I wouldn't come up to this point here. Because you'll take fire from the whole of this roof. And from building two as well, because of the gun emplacement that's over there. It may seem really appealing, but it it's really not worth it. And you're quite in the line of sight of this gun, it will mow you down. I'd suggest instead you go down here. And either try and pick the right side of the roof from here, making sure that heavy machine gun doesn't get a line of sight on you. From building two. But you can clear the right side from here. And then sprint across. You'll more than likely take fire as you hit that open space. For as long as you're running, you should be all right. I've not yet died crossing this section. Now there's a heavy machine gun here on this roof as well. But this spot allows you some really nice cover to be able to pick the roof. So slow crouch, stand up, and you can pick the rogues off the roof. My advice would be don't take out any of the machine gun emplacements unless you have to. Because as long as you're behind them, they do a really good job of taking out anybody that's coming in from the other direction. So they really work to your advantage. Again, you got a really clean line on building one from here, but it is a good 200 and... Well, you can see how far it is. And I've spent a lot of time sniping from here to see what the damage drop-off is like, and it seems quite substantial. So this is where you get line of sight on building two, but you're in line with that machine gun. Now, there's a machine gun here, here, and there's one over there that you can't see from this position. So be very careful poking your head up over here. And then there's a gun emplacement behind this metal here that you, you can't really get an angle on it from here, but sometimes you can get a position down here depending on which way the gun is looking. But you can kite all the way around here. Using these rocks as cover. Again, as you come out of here, you need to be very careful of building too so that you don't take fire. But you can sprint across this space, much the same as the last spot. Um, and you probably will take some fire, but it won't be anything too crippling. And you can either go over the back of the rocks here or down the front, but this puts you in a really solid cover. Check in building three to make sure you haven't got a new angle on rogues. And then you can move down this way and insert around the back. There are no mines or anything down here, so it's all clean. And then from this angle, you can safely pick off the emplacement on the roof, which is something you really want to do. 
because these angle of fire will get you as you're coming in as you're breaking through cover. But if you swing around on the right here, you can get the line of sight on the gunner from relative safety to be able to take him out. Also be aware there's a scab extract on the right here. You won't get hit by the machine gun on the back. It's pointing the wrong way. And obviously the one on the opposite corner won't see you either. This lets you into, into the compound from the eastern side. And there's a lot of cover that you can weave in and out of and you won't take fire as long as you use the cover. And you can get in here and, and there's a lot of high value loot spawns, just tech, that kind of stuff, just loose stuff hanging around and raider patrols. At that point, farm what you're after, kill raiders, and then exfil back out in the same route that you've just used to get in. Stay away from this side of the building though, unless you're looking for more trouble. Because as soon as you poke your head out, the roof is going to light you up. You don't actually need to take anything out on this roof if you don't want to, because it'll work in your favour. As they'll take out other PMCs that are trying to come in from the coast, which I'll show you that route in a minute. Really, just stick to that end of the building. By now, you've probably killed enough raiders and picked up enough loot to be able to move out with quite a bit of cash. I've done this with friends before, and you can pull out millions of rubles worth of loot from just stuff that's lying around on the floor. You want from here on the way out? You can actually hit building three, but make sure you don't stand here in the open because it's just asking to get shot. If you go around the back, you can, you're can you going to be moving in and out of cover, so you're going to be taking fire depending on where patrols are. But with a bit of luck and a bit of skill, you can make it around to building three relatively safely without getting shot. If you want to take a slightly safer approach to building two, what you can do is come out the way you came in, go back up towards these rocks and then loop down behind building three using it as cover and using the door on the opposite side to get in. And to illustrate the point, we're back at the rock that overlooks building three that we were sniping at from before. You can run all the way around here and down here and there are no mines so you're safe to carry on. This divot makes it look like there could be a minefield here. For those of you who aren't aware, uh, minefields are denoted by divots in the ground with scorch marks around them. From my experience, by the time you see them, you're often already in the minefield and shortly thereafter would detonate a mine. But this map seems to work a little differently. Um, if you, What I found is if you step on a mine and then patch yourself up and then immediately step on another mine, it doesn't seem to kill you as it does on woods. I think I took like seven or eight mines in one raid and didn't die when I was trying to test out where the minefields were. So, yeah, just don't don't quote me on that one, all right? But you can come around here and through into here. This is also a little risky because of the lack of cover. You don't want to be hanging around in the open because patrols across here will pick you off as you come through. But you can run in and then repeat your looting pattern in here. So I'm going to quickly show you route two in. It's a little bit safer. The cover's a little bit more solid, but you can't take out the rogues on route two and three as easily. So this is route two. It's arguably safer than the first route apart from one section. So you're going to be coming across this bridge and you're looking to use this truck here as cover. Making sure there's no raiders floating around on these roofs or down this street. And you want to watch out for potential contact on these little outposts but you can again make it across here reasonably safely and then skirt the whole of this wall all of the way down. As a bear, yeah, it's the whole of the compound is more challenging as a bear than it is as a USEC because as a USEC, you can run all the way down the length of this wall and not take any fire. But what you need to be careful of is as you get here, you need to make sure you've got range. This is the only dangerous spot in the whole of this particular strip, but because of the rogues on the roof down here. They need to be taken out before you can push past. And watch out, obviously, for breaks in the fences as you cross them. The AI shouldn't hit you because it's such a narrow space and you're moving it across it so quickly, but it will draw their attention. But as we come around here, just so you understand what we're looking at, this is building three, and this is where the rogues will be. But this is the only real danger point 
You can do a combination of route one and route two by going up here, which is where we ran across earlier. That's where the minefield was the first one. And that's where the second one is. So you can take the rogues out on three from the cliffs and then dip down here. But you need to be very careful of fire coming from over in the direction of building one. It's a little bit risky, but it's definitely worth acknowledging the fact that it's it's an option. But you can run down the whole length of this wall and not take any fire. You can run across the outside of the pipe if you want extra cover. But coming this route means you primarily only have to watch out for other PMCs or player scabs. And that brings you back to building three. Or you can follow the whole of the wall around to get to building two. Do be aware though, there are no mines. This is all clear down here. If there are any rogues left on this roof, they won't be able to actually get a line of sight on you. But as soon as you hit this corner, you're going to be in range and line of sight for that machine gun emplacement. So you need to be aware of that. If anything, if you're running with a couple of people, it might be worth putting a couple up on the cliffs to clear out the gun positions while the rest of you uh, take the safer route against the wall. Which will sort of give you different avenues of approach. Okay, so let's take a look at route 3. So route 3 is a little bit hairier than routes 1 and 2, simply because you're in line of sight of the emplacements. So you need to watch out for this machine gun as you're coming down here. So if you spawn on that side of the map, when you hit this, when you kind of hit this blue fence, you want to dip down here. This will let you break line of sight, but you need to watch out for this tower here because there are so many gun emplacements as well as that machine gun that's over there. This isn't the, this isn't the most effective way to do this insertion. But if you don't want to go over the rocks for whatever reason, then this is probably the most viable other option. So if you're anywhere along this coast, you're going to take fire from that front gate. So if you come down on this angle, you can, for the most part, keep your eye out, check the towers, avoid fire from those machine gun emplacements. Take the slow bridge. Once you get to here, this is a minefield right here. However, if you play it right, and as long as you make sure the towers are clear, you can walk across the front of the water here and you won't hit any mines. There's a gun emplacement here as well. So these guys have been picked off. And you've made sure it's clear. You can come across the front of the shore here with minimal resistance. But whatever you do, make sure you stick to the shoreline. This insertion kind of works better if you spawn down here. I wouldn't actively choose this route over any of the other ones. But if you're down here already, you're in cover all the way down here. You can use this defilade to move down the coast. What you're looking to do is pick up over the rocks and where possible try and pick off the rogues. From here you're going to take fire. From here to there is 170-ish meters. I'll be covering ranging and sniping in a new video of series that I'm starting anyway, so we won't go into too much detail about that now. But we'll we'll cover that at a later point in more detail. But you're looking to edge all of the way around here, using the rocks for cover. From here, you're relatively safe approaching the compound. Watch out for patrols outside of the walls as well. Oh, that's where the minefield is. So the main gates, apart from the marksman or anybody that's floating around on the wall, won't be able to engage backwards. So you should be safe from any of the gun emplacements that you haven't cleared. Again, you need to realistically take this guy out here. And I'd have more than likely taken him out before I get to this point here. But it does depend on your angle and the guns that you're using. But he needs to not be on his gun emplacement. Even if you shoot him to drive him off the gun, that's better than him being sat there looking at you. Um, even if you only damage them and you don't actually kill them, the rogues will jump off their gun emplacements and go on a patrol around the roof until they're no longer aggroed, at which point they'll return to the gun emplacement. So even if you just get some shots on him to push him off the gun, you can then come up across here. Again, making sure to keep an eye on this right-hand side here. And you can skirt down here, through here, 
and push to the corner of this building. You may catch raider patrols or random scabs, but once you're here, you're relatively safe. Don't walk out here though, whatever you do, don't walk out here because you'll start taking fire from across the yard depending on where you are and how far out you are. You can cross here to get to this, this spot on the wall in order to be able to move up the wall safely in order to edge back and try and take out the gun emplacement from here, but you have to be very careful that he doesn't get a line of sight on you before you get one on him because he'll put you down. And just so you're aware, as long as you stick to this side of the wall all the way up, you're not going to hit any mines. So you can run the full length of this up to this point and you're back at the main gate and you won't hit any mines and, you, and you're behind the gun emplacements. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but because this is this is all relatively open unless you've taken out all the rogues and there is some nice loot here, but there's not really a reason to go up this way. So back at building one, once you're inside here, do the obvious, check for patrols, check for scabs, check for loot. But you're free to move through. Same as the other buildings two and three. High value loot on the floor. If you decide you do want to push across the building two from here, that's the door we came in through. We need to move to this corner here and carefully peek this roof. Where is it? Here, this roof here. There's a gun emplacement here and there's a gun emplacement on the corner over here. You can pick them from here, the uh, the rogues, but you just need to be very careful. Again, a range, 134 meters. If, so if you set a PSO on an AK to 150, you should be able to one-tap them in the face from here. At that point, you're still going to have rogues on the roof up here because you wouldn't have cleared them. So you need to move to this wall and sort of edge backwards. Keep walking backwards until you can get a line of sight on the rogues. You can even crawl underneath this truck here. And use it for cover. And keep edging back until you get a line until you can clear them off the roof. Which will leave you with this corner. If you've taken the rogues out here like you're supposed to, you should be relatively safe using this wall to run down as cover. Making sure to be obviously be careful around openings. You should be able to ride the whole of this wall down here until you get to this point. And then you can cross. You're, you're probably going to take fire, especially if there's rogues on building three. But you can cross here and in through this door, which is back at building two. And then obviously everything from the first half of this tutorial applies from there. I don't tend to go through the middle of the compound, at least as a bear, because it's just asking to die from crossfire. I've seen Usex doing it and they get a lot closer to those rogues before they start taking any aggro. But unless you're completing tasks that require that you go down there like the tank planting mission, which if you are a bear, the easiest way to do that would probably be to come around the back of the cliff, take out building three and two. And then hit this wall and follow this wall all the way down to this door here. Cross, open it, and the tank you're after is right there. So you're susceptible to gunfire from building one, and you can either try and pick them off, or you can hail mary it across, jump down, run in. Give yourself a little power slide so you've got cover from the reef. Do your plant. And I don't think you need to survive with that plant, so in which case you can feel free to die on the way out. I'm actually going to take you through the middle of the campaign. So these grass banks, I've not walked through all of them yet. However, there are mines littered over the inside of the compound. I'll probably cover that in a later video. I'm just trying to stick to... Um, showing you the most effective way to get in. This is a good example because I know there are mines in there. I found that one out the hard way. There's so much potential for really cool gunfights and engagements in this compound once the rogues have been taken off the roofs. It's a little bit difficult trying to push through here when the rogues are up, especially with the machine guns, because they just clap you out too fast. 
But ground based without the rogues, you know, I'm not complaining about the rogues. I, l I like the fact that they're really hard. But I'm really down with the idea of picking all the rogues off and then coming through. So if anybody's down for that kind of thing, either hit me up in the comments or catch me on Twitch. Or grab a link to my Discord, which will be in the description for this video. I hope this has helped. If you've got any more questions or anything to add, just uh, hit me up in the comments. And if you've enjoyed it, do massage the old like button. Cheers, guys. Catch you in the next one.